Hello, and uh, this is uh, my second uh, Trinity talk, and uh, I've chosen to do Psalm 5 uh, today, uh, Behind God's Shield. And I'm just going to start reading from verse 1. So this is Psalm, the fifth Psalm. Listen to my words, Lord, consider my lament. Hear my cry for help, my King and my God, for, for to you I pray. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. When's the last time that you turn to God with this kind of prayer? Um, sometimes we are just so caught up, you know, with our, our schedules and, and the things that we have to do with our, our children, with uh, so many distractions that happen from day to day. But when is the last time that you turned to God in, uh, you know, in complete focus for what it is uh, that was going on in your life? Uh, to, uh, rather than turning to our usual, uh, you know, the things and, and to the people for, uh, for help, uh, turning to God. Uh, when's the last time you turned to God in desperation? Because this is what it seems like in, in these first uh, two verses of this psalm. It's desperation. But then, it's not just turning to God. Then, to wait. To wait. Uh, it's, it says here, I, in the morning I lay my request before you, and I wait ex expectantly, uh, uh, expecting an answer. And so... Let me encourage you uh, this morning to lay your request, whatever your request is uh, this morning, to lay it uh, before the feet of God and then to wait, to wait for God's answer and to wait and see how God is going to answer. I continue with verse 4. For you are not a God who is pleased with wickedness. Um, with you, evil people are not welcome. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful you, Lord, detest. I, I like the way it starts. For you are, and this is uh, um, something that we see over and over and over again uh, in the Psalms, especially a repetition of who God, a declaration of who God is. And, and you could probably put almost anything that you had learned over the years um, through the Bible, through attending church, uh, through your, uh, you know, meeting with other people and talking about what God has done in your life. You could fill in the blanks here yourself. For you are... Who is God for you? For you are great, for you are mighty, for you are my healer, for you are my guide, for you are my Lord, you are all-knowing, you are peace, you are the one who sees. Fill in the blank this morning. For you are. And notice, it says, it, notice it says uh, that God is not pleased with, with wickedness. To be clear now, in the character of God, He is not pleased when evil happens. And so God is not playing with us. The rules are very clear and they're, they're stated in black and white. This is who God is. And uh, he doesn't, you know, blink an eye or, uh, uh, sorry, wink, uh, you know, to evil. And, and uh, kind of sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's not. No, it's very clear uh, to, in, in God's presence what it is uh, that he requires of us and uh, what it is that he, um, he thinks is good and what is uh, evil. Uh, and so uh, God is not pleased with wickedness. God is not playing with us. But let's continue in verse 7. But I, by your great love, can come into your house. In reverence I bow down towards your holy temple. So God is a God of justice. Yes, he is not pleased with wickedness. He's a God of justice, but he is also a God of love. The great balance of who God is. And uh, we see it right from the beginning of the, bite of, uh, the, the Bible. Uh, Adam and Eve, they sin. The first sin that's recorded in the Bible. And yet, God... Uh, after Adam and Eve sin, doing the very thing that he told them not to do, 
then he provides a way out. Uh, he kills an animal uh, and takes the, the skin of that animal and clothes them with it. So <clears throat> even though he told them that if you eat of the fruit of that tree, you will surely die. And yet, they did not die right away, but he, uh, he kills an animal instead, and he clothes them. This is showing the balance of God's justice and God's love. And so because of his love, and because of the sacrifice, not of an animal, but now we know in the New Testament because uh, of, uh, of Jesus, because of Jesus' sacrifice, uh, because of his love and because of his sacrifice, we can say, and I'm going to continue reading in verse 8, Lead me, Lord, lead me in your righteousness, not my righteousness, but lead me in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Have you ever had the sense in your life that God was leading you? That the things you were saying, the things that you were doing, and even though you did your best to plan, uh, you gave that plan up to God and, and you started walking in it and, and just had this sense that God was leading you everything, every, every, um, every place you went and everything you did. Uh, you can have that today. You can have the sense in your life that God is leading you. And so here's the prayer of the psalm. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. But I continue in verse 11. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them uh, ever sing for joy. Uh, spread your protection over them that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. That's where I wanted, wanted to end up today, uh, that God can surround us with his shield. I know that uh, there is, um, you know, anxiety and fear uh, especially today, because of the things that we cannot see, you know, uh, we cannot see a virus, and we cannot see who has it, who doesn't, and there's this anxiety and this fear about, okay, what's going to happen, you know, uh, but understand that God uh, can surround you with a shield, and maybe you're, you're thinking, wait a minute, a shield is, uh, is a kind of flat, it only, it only protects one side, uh, but not God's shield. God's shield surrounds us. And I think of Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15 is probably one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible. And it's, uh, you know, at a, <clears throat> a time when Abraham was feeling uh, discouraged uh, because he hadn't yet received the promises of God in his life. And he was wondering where God was in all of this. And and, and God comes to him in his moment of discouragement and tells him, I am your great shield. Actually, if I, beginning, if I start reading right from the beginning of the verse, it says, uh, uh, God says, do not be afraid, Abraham. Maybe that's something you can say to yourself uh, this morning. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield. I'm your very great reward. In other words, God is coming to Abraham and saying, it's not just that I'm going to give you a shield. It's not that the, the gift that I'm giving you here is a shield, but that I myself will be your shield. And this is exactly what the psalmist here is talking about. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them because he does it with his person. He, you surround them with your favor as with a shield. I want to let you know that uh, God's shield today is surrounding you. Can I pray with you? Lord, I pray uh, for all of those who are experiencing uh, anxiety, uh, who are experiencing just the, the sense of um, you know, this fear of uh, not knowing uh, what's going to happen to them, the future and, and all of this. 
<clears throat> Lord, would you remind them that you can be our shield, that you can be the one who guides and leads, and, and yes, uh, you are a God who is holy and righteous but you, uh, and just, but you are also love. Lord, we can come into your presence and we can leave uh, uh, our request to you and you hear them. And we can wait expectantly, knowing that you have given us a very great shield, yourself, your person, your presence. Lord, I pray that you would be with each one today. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.